Greetings! Welcome to Day of the Indie. In this video, you'll learn how to create your very own scene kit intro. To follow along, you'll need the latest version of Xcode installed. There's also a downloadable example code zip file that you will need. Okay, let's get going. Extract the example code zip file to your desktop. Take note of the following folders. There's a textures folder, a scene kit intro quick start, and a scene kit completed. Go ahead and open up the Xcode project under the quick start folder. This is just a basic scene kit game project. Its main purpose is to simply load and present the intro scene. Take a moment and look around. If you're interested in the code behind the scenes, Take a look at the game view controller. The intro scene is located under the assets scenes folder. But before you open that up, add some textures to your project. Drag and drop the textures folder into the assets folder. This folder contains all the images that you'll be using to build your intro scene. Go ahead and select the intro scene. You're now ready to build your scene. Let's take a closer look at the intro scene. Under the scene graph, you'll find the default camera. You'll also find three empty nodes positioned right in the center of the scene. See these nodes as containers for the objects you're going to add to your scene. These containers will keep your scene layout clean and organized. Let's configure the camera. Select the camera, then go into the node inspector. Here you'll find settings related to the selected node's position, rotation and scale. Position the camera in the middle of the scene, 1.5 units high on the y-axis and 5 units deep on the z-axis. Then tilt the camera negative 5 degrees forward so that it has a nice view over the center stage. Finally, Drag the camera node into the camera rig. Think of the camera rig as the camera's focus point. It doesn't matter if you rotate or move the rig, the camera will always face in the same direction as the rig's position. Select the camera rig and rotate it 15 degrees on the y-axis. This shifts the view slightly to the right. Awesome. Now add a floor. A floor node is a special plane that extends out to near infinite in the X and Z directions. It also has some cool reflective powers. Select the object library and filter on floor. Drag a floor node into the scene. Make the floor node a child of the scene node. Then select the attributes inspector. Attributes relates to settings that applies to the type of object you're configuring. So these settings will be different for every type of node that you add to your scene. Go ahead and change the reflectivity to 50%. Next, select the material inspector. Here you'll find the materials used to texture your object. We're going to focus on the diffuse texture that simply specifies the base color texture of your object. Choose the grid image as a diffuse texture. Expand the diffuse tab and reduce its intensity down to 20%. Change the scale to 20 by 20 to tile the grid on the floor. Now you've got a shiny new floor ready to reflect some stuff. Excellent. Next, add a wall. You'll be using plain nodes for the rest of the objects in the scene. A plane node is a basic quad that can be textured. In the object library, filter on plane. Drag a plane node into the scene. Make the plane node a child of the scene node, then rename the new node to wall. Set the size to 20 units wide and 10 units high. Position the wall in the center, 
five units high on the y-axis and negative two units on the z-axis. Now choose the grid image as a diffuse texture. Expand the diffuse and reduce its intensity down to 20%. Set wrap S and wrap T to repeat so that the texture is tiled across the entire surface of the plane. Change the scale to 4 by 2. Now add the logo. Drag out another plane into the scene and make it a child of the scene node. Rename it to logo. Change its size to 2 units wide and 1 unit high. Then position the logo into the center. 0 0.6 units high on the Y axis and 0 units deep on the Z axis. Next, choose the logo image as the diffuse texture. Next, add Dotty. Drag out another plane node into the scene and make it a child of the scene node. Rename it to Dotty. Set the size to 0 0.5 units wide and 1 unit high. Position it 1.5 units off center on the X axis, one unit high on the Y axis, and 0 0.5 units deep on the Z axis. Scale it to 1.5 units wide and 1.5 units high. Finally, choose the dotted image as a diffuse texture. You're almost done with all the objects in the scene. Add one more plane into the scene and name it URL. Set the size to 1 unit wide and 0 0.1 unit high. Position it in the center, 0 0.1 units high on the Y axis and 1 unit deep on the Z axis. Also scale it to 2 units wide and 2 units high. Finally, choose the URL image as a diffuse texture. And guess what? You're done with all the elements in the scene. Excellent. Time to add some lights. Under the object library, filter on light. Drag an ambient light and a omni light into the scene. Move both of them under the Lights node. Position the ambient light right in the center of the scene. Reduce its intensity to 500 units. Ambient lights are used to lit up the shadow areas of your scene so that you don't end up with those dark black shadows. Let's move on to the Omni Light. Position the Omni Light in the center, five units high on the Y axis and 10 units deep on the Z axis. The Omni Light is a special light that shines light in all directions and can be used to give your entire scene some soft light. Now add a spotlight. Drag a spotlight into the scene Move it under the Lights node and position it in the center, 1 unit high and 3.5 units deep. Set the outer angle to 60 degrees. Set the intensity to 2000 and enable cast shadows. Spotlights are directional, so you have to aim them at a target. The light is emitted in a cone-like shape and best of all, they can cast soft shadows. Our scene is still too bright around the edges. Let's add a vignette effect to tone that down a little. Select the camera node. Under the attributes inspector, look for post-processing vignetting. Set the power to 1. Excellent. Let's focus on animation next. The scene is not that exciting at the moment. You can liven things up a bit 
by adding some movement to the entire scene. Select the camera rig and make sure that you've got the action editor open. Under the object library, filter on rotate. Drag out two rotate actions into the action editor. Select both actions and create an endless loop animation. To do that, right click and select loop. Then select the endless icon. Select the second action, then open up the attributes inspector. Set the start time to 10 seconds, the duration to 10 seconds and the timing function to ease in and ease out. Then rotate 30 degrees around the Y axis. This will rotate the camera rig negative 30 degrees. Select the first action, set the duration to 10 seconds and the timing function to ease in and ease out. Set the rotation to negative 30 degrees around the Y axis. This will rotate the camera rig 30 degrees back again. When you hit the play button, the camera will pan from left to right and back again in an endless loop. Let's animate Dottie. Add some animation to make her hover in place. With Dottie selected, under the objects library, filter on move. Drag out two move actions into the action editor. Select both actions, then create an endless loop. Select the first action and open up the attributes inspector. Change the timing function to ease in, ease out. Set the offset to 0.1 units on the Y axis. This will move Dottie slightly upwards. Select the second action. Change the timing function to ease in, ease out. Set the offset to negative 0.1 on the Y axis. This will move Dottie slightly downwards again. Hit that play button one more time. That's it. You just created an awesome intro scene with SceneKit. Well done. If you like this tutorial and want to learn more about SceneKit, go check out my 3D Apple Games by Tutorials book at raywendelik.com. Cheers and remember, if you're not having fun, you're probably doing it wrong.